This podcast is brought to you by Aspers Casino Newcastle, home of the Mags Four Pound Pint, available on all draft beers for all NUFC home and televised games, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. Over 18s only, visit begamblerware.org and be drink aware. For details and T's and C's, visit aspersnewcastle.co.uk. It's your True Faith Newcastle United podcast and it's time to discuss the rest of the season. We're kind of over the hump now of um, of that mid-season point. We've got a lot of games out of the way. What is success? What's going to define success from here on in, I think is the question on many people's lips. And there are lots of different ways you can define success. And of course, you are not necessarily... Um, uh, change to any one kind of way but to talk about it and talk about different ideas and different um, means of success today uh, I am joined by Adam Widrington, Stephen Ord and Kyle Thompson and we're just going to kind of hash it out everybody's got a different idea of what success is but uh, we're just going to hash it out before we get started, I, it would be remiss of me not to remind you that we are on Patreon. It's between three and eight pounds a month for tons of extra content previews, pro views with ex-professionals, um, fun question ones, all kinds of different podcasts. So if you like this, there's lots more content like it. Please do join us on Patreon. It's between three and eight pounds a month. All right, we'll get into it, will we? So we are into the final part of the season, which under Eddie Howe, historically, although we've only really had two of these, um, has been the better part of our season. It's where we've managed to pick up a lot of points, where everything's kind of got into a rhythm and we've ended the season reasonably successfully. Obviously, in the first season that Eddie Howe, the sort of half, just over half season that Eddie Howe was in charge, he he took on a, a relegation and almost nailed on relegation side and did the unthinkable and we finished 11th. And then, of course, last season, um, for myriad reasons, not least because we were class, we finished fourth. Um, this season has been more of a challenge so far, I think it is fair to say. Um, and so you kind of recalibrate as a fan, I think you recalibrate what success is after almost every single game. And and as Norman talked about on the podcast after Luton, that's normal. That's what football fans do. Um, but I think if you look back to the beginning of the season, what a successful season was to me then is definitely not what a successful season is to me now. So I'm going to start with Stephen Ord. I'm going to come to you and we're going to I just what tell me what success, a successful season is to you, because as far as I'm aware, you want to fuck off the league entirely. Well, I mean, we're not going to get relegated. So the bit the big thing's got to be that by doing whatever we choose to do in the league, probably the worst position we're going to finish in is 13th or 14th. But I don't even think we finished that low. So forget about that for a minute. The thing that we need to do to set ourselves on the way to being the great football club in terms of uh, our future that we all want is to win a trophy. Man City did it by winning the FA Cup. Chelsea under Mourinho did it by winning the League Cup. Um, Man United under uh, Alex Ferguson did it by winning the FA Cup and I think the European Cup Winners' Cup. Uh, teams all find a way. If they want to be a big clubs, they win trophies. Um, we can't just say, well, we've had lots of people come to watch us in the championship because no longer does that sit, have you down as one of the big clubs or one of the great clubs. Um, I personally think that we're in a position where where we finish this season is going to be somewhere between 6th and 7th and maybe 12th. And I think I said that uh, at the start of January. I thought the worst position we finished in is 12th and I stand by that. Um, given that we finished 11th and then 4th, you know, people will be disappointed. But if we end up finishing around 8th or ninth, and we won a cup, people would talk about this as the greatest season of their lifetime. Regardless of what else happens, it would be the greatest season of our life because they'd seen Newcastle United win a trophy. Um, my dad was 11 the last time Newcastle United won a trophy when they won the first cup in 1969. Um, my dad wasn't even born when we lost won our domestic trophy uh, in 1955. And... Uh, as old as I might look, even I wasn't uh, alive <laughs> like to remember uh, what it's like to win a trophy for Newcastle United. Um, I have watched us be beaten. 
in three finals now at Wembley. I've watched us lose in a semi-final at Wembley. I've watched us lose in a semi-final at Millennium Stadium. Losing gets old. You want to win a trophy. Coventry, Wigan, Portsmouth. I'm naming teams there that have won trophies since we last won a trophy. Like It is time Newcastle United put themselves back on the name of one of the major domestic trophies. And for that, I say, we forget about games like Forest away. Forget about games like Wolves at home. Like, let's go and beat Blackburn. Then, then whoever we get in the quarterfinal, let's go and beat them. Let's hope to home draw and let's hope we battle them. Then let's hope we go to a Wembley semi-final and we show, right, this is how good we are. We really mean business. We're coming back here in four weeks' time to win this thing. Because the chances are that if we're going to win anything this season, it has to be this trophy. And we go into every season wanting to win something. And so for me, for this season, the big push has got to be, forget about the league because we're not going to win it. We're probably not going to finish in the top five. So the reality is, is that you can really prioritise winning a cup so that everybody knows Newcastle United mean it when they say they want to be in the big time. Well, I feel like I would kind of follow you into battle, actually, Stephen, after that. And I know that Adam and Kyle have slightly different... Everybody wants to see Newcastle succeed. We all want to see Newcastle succeed. Everybody wants that right that's the caveat of all of this it's just what success looks like or what is acceptable success to each different person is different um you're not allowed to change your mind though you guys having heard Stephen's impassioned speech I guess my only question is is it okay if we win the cup and I'll put it out to everybody Adam you can you maybe you can answer is it okay if we win the cup and we finish 13th is that fine it, it it is fine because the, the 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 cup win would supersede anything we do in the league. I think that's right. Where I take a bit of issue with what Audie's saying is that you're you're basically you're saying prioritize a cup win, where actually a lot about the cup is sort of out of our hands. Really, you, you, there was a lot of use of the word hope there, Audie. Hopefully, we get a home tie. Hopefully, we avoid the big. There's a lot of big teams in this in the FA Cup still, and it's. I think it's difficult to it, it's difficult to say okay, well let's just let's just win the cup because it's a it's a lot more unpredictable a, a run in the cup, and I think if that was to go wrong or falter even at the quarterfinals or whatever semi final, and if you've if you've seemingly kind of fucked off the league as you say, <laughs> or, um, then what you're left with you're kind of left with nothing. So you can, you're kind of you, you're right. The win in the cup would 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 achieve two things. It would give us much needed silverware that we've wanted a long, long time. It would get us into Europe as well because you get a place in the Europa League if you win the UEFA in the FA Cup, which is all fantastic. But I just think a cup run is so unpredictable. It's so hard to um, account for uh, draws and form and just one-off games one-off games where if something goes wrong, you can't fix it. That's it. Think about the, the League Cup quarterfinal. Closing minutes at Stamford Bridge. Um, Kieran Trippier, brain fart, and then suddenly that's it. That, that, that It's just over. Um, I know there was a little bit after that and there was whatever. But but in terms of us getting, th- that was the difference and then we're out and then suddenly that, well, that's just it until next season. So it could so easily topple with a cup run at, at, at a drop of a hat. And I think that's, that's my issue with where you have to just only prioritize the cup in that respect. Um, so it, 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 this the margin for error is so small that like it could just all crumble within a game or two. So it's it's a tricky one to kind of hang your hat on, I think, is what I'm trying to say. Any response, Stephen? Well, my, my retort would be that bar Liverpool, there isn't a big team left in the cup we haven't beaten. Love that, but again. Alex, uh, not Alex, he's not here. Adam's point is that it's so unpredictable and these teams can pull it, like pull performances out the bag, can't they? We've seen it happen to us many times. Obviously, we were a much worse side back then, so that's like a consideration. It's really interesting. And Adam, we'll get to your version of success soon, but uh, I think we'll we'll leave it there for Stephen's point. There is overlap, of course, there's overlap between all of these different points, and we're going to get into it. But I'd like to get into Kyle's next. So Kyle, we'll come to you in a moment. Okay, Kyle, it's your go. Before we break um, for part way through the podcast, 
uh, it's it's your turn to tell us what success is to you. And I understand that, you know, a cup win is of course success, but you would consider, am I right in saying, you would consider this season successful if we get to the semis and we finish in the top half of the table? Yeah, and my, my reasoning for that simply is, I think last season we, we overperformed a lot. We've had the Champions League and I think they get back to Wembley this season as well as some of the moments that we've had this season, beating Sunderland at the Stadium of Light, uh, beating Man United at Old Trafford in the Cup, uh, beating Barcelona in the Champions League. Like In terms of seasons, like you always look back on a season with particular moments and I think this season has definitely had those moments and I think getting back to Wembley, getting to a semi-final, whether we get to the final or not, adds another amazing moment to what would be see looked back on as an amazing season, even if we were to finish 10th. I mean, to go on Audie's point before, like, would you take 13th in a cup? Damn fucking right. I would I'd, I'd get relegated. I'd do Wigan and, and win a cup. I've never I've I've seen when the Champions League oh, wow I, I've sorry seen, go I've, on. I've seen I've seen when in the I've seen I've I've seen when the championship and play Burton. I've seen where terrible playing away from home in the Premier League, fighting to stay up. Steve Bruce Wall survived that somehow. <laughs> so getting relegated one more time to it, it doesn't really like it wouldn't it wouldn't bother us if Newcastle won an FA Cup to pack it up because I've never seen we win an FA Cup. Don't, don't get us wrong, I'm not sitting here and saying oh Newcastle should get relegated to win an FA Cup, but no. But I'd go as far down as getting relegated to say it happened because it's something as a fan. Unless you're very very old, you haven't seen Newcastle win a trophy. So for me, it's a it's a case of something I really like to see getting to the semi final and winning at Wembley. I know there's discussion with Wembley being not a good place for a semi final, but I think it'll help with if we get to a semi final, win the semi final, get that Wembley hoodoo off our back, so we can go to the final a few weeks later, full of confidence and full of beans from the from the semi final. So I'll take a top ten finish because I think depending on who wins the Carabao Cup and depending on who wins the FA Cup. As low as ninth could get a Europa Conference League spot. So for me, that's why I would that's why I kind of go for something like that. Because I think the current squad of players we have, if we add to that in the summer, we'll have a really good chance of winning the Europa Conference League. Like West Ham, the season they won the conference league beat them five one on their own ground. Like there's there's a high chance we can we can go there and, and really do do some damage in that in that tournament. So even if the even if we make a semi final, hit the top ten, get into the Europa Conference League, gives you a really good crack at the tournament, and then and then go from there because you can look back on this season, FA Cup semi final, maybe a final if we we'll be if we we'll win the semi final as well, top ten, some amazing moments that you'll remember forever, like the PSG game for example, or Sunderland away, or, or Man United away beating them three nil. Um, there's so many good moments from this season, and that's why I'd probably take. Uh, semi-final or final or even went, going on and winning it in a, in a top 10 finish because season's all about moments and I think we've had a good amount this season already. That's so true. We have had a good amount of moments, haven't we? We've had some really fantastic moments that you can tell your children and your grandchildren, if you have them or ever have them, um, about these have been like spectacular nights under the lights and things like that. Do I have anyone in this group who hates the fact that they play the semis at Wembley? I'm pretty Me. sure. Yeah. Okay, Adam, go. I think playing the semifinals at Wembley, uh, well, I grew up, you didn't play um, Wembley semifinals at all. They were played at Villa Park, Old Trafford, the likes of that. Um, if you think about the when we beat Sheffield United, if you think about when we beat Tottenham as well in those semifinals, neither of those were at Wembley, but they're still some of my viv most vivid, vivid memories as a, as a kid watching Newcastle in the FA Cup. Um, I just think it takes a lot of the magic away from the final. I think it dilutes the impact mm. of the final venue when you've already played a couple of games on there just a few weeks before in the same tournament. It just takes the shine off it, I think. And I think it, um, yeah, it lessens it. It cheapens what the final is. And I think save... You know, we've got so many massive, good stadiums around the country. Let's use them. You can, you know, whether in the Midlands or the North or the wherever they are, there's plenty of tournament-ready stadiums which we've proven um, that we can that we can use for for big events like this. So, yeah, just 
let's not waste Wembley. Sorry, let's let's not let's not overkill on Wembley. Let's save it for for the final and and keep it magic. I'm about to be an arch hypocrite because still my greatest moment or one of my greatest moments as a Newcastle fan is watching my hero score at Wembley in an FA Cup semi final. Um, and the moment Robert Lee's header hit the net, I've never heard noise like it from Newcastle fan. I think we genuinely thought that was it. Bobby and Shiro are going to win us the cup. Um, Gus Poyer got in the way as he so often did. Um, but I, I'm I'm with Adam. Um, I can remember. I think it was neither 91, 92, or maybe 1991, 91, 92. Uh, both Sheffield clubs and both North London clubs got to the semi-finals, so they played them at Wembley. And then the year they were closing it, they moved them to Wembley to make a big deal out of it. Mm. Um, I actually enjoyed going to the Millennium Stadium for the semi-finals. I would happily do that. Yeah. I mean, Cardiff is an absolute pain in the backside to get to, but. Um, it's uh, it was it was brilliant to be there. The the ground was really really good. You got a great view of the pitch from wherever you were. Sadly, Man United were a lot better than us the time we went there. Um, I just I, I I'm with Adam. I think the whole point is his semi finals were supposed to be held at a ground midway between those two clubs, and so that nobody got a a, a hosting uh, sort of advantage, but both sets of fans could get there relatively easily. Now it's at Wembley and fans get a bigger allocation maybe for the semi-finals than the final but mm. it, it takes away from the joy of wow we're going to an FA Cup final as opposed to oh we're back here again we've been here before <laughs> yeah I think that's the thing isn't it I, I get Kyle's point I get Kyle's point but like the idea that the idea of getting that kind of off your back and 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 the and, and the sort of the st- not stigma but like the whole like um sense of occasion you kind of get used to it so that if you do get through to the final and you come back down um it's like oh yeah we've done this we know how to do this we've already won here and and it has that kind of um feel to it but I I don't know like it's a long way to go for for fans as well isn't it Adam? I would just say that a Wembley semi-final will massively favour London-based clubs as well right I think it's massively unfair shouldn't be should be elsewhere yeah, that's the thing. I I just think from a fan's perspective, like getting to and from Wembley every couple of weeks is what it'll feel like if we get there. I, I, but back to kind of Kyle's point, I think I think it's an interesting point, Kyle. I think you know, I, I wonder if it for me it just feels like if we. If we get to a semi and it were, you know, ninth or tenth, that doesn't feel like success. Like, I get what you're saying about all the lovely moments that we've had, and I agree with you, but it doesn't feel like success because it it doesn't mean anything. Neither of those things mean anything. Like, yeah, we got to the semis, but we've been to the semis before, and, and like, yes, we get a trip to Wembley, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, it just – I feel like that would make this season – first sort of you know those european nights aside a little bit more forgettable than i would want it to be and that wouldn't be success to me adam uh to, to kind of back kyle up a little bit i would say that if we if we did reach the semi-final of the fa cup i think what it would represent even if it kind of again was sort of sacking off the league a bit not we're not fucking it off like audi we're just sacking it off a bit with kyle but, <laughs> but if if we hit the semi-finals then what you've got is what you've got is we've actually given it a really good go in all cup yeah. competitions. We've fought on all fronts. We've got within a, a minute or two from the semi-finals of the Carabao. We are um, a fixture away from from the quarterfinals of the FA Cup, and we got hit with a group of death in the Champions League. And we did our we did our best in that competition with half of that uh, campaign without a bench, without a senior bench. So it. What it would represent hitting a semi-final in the FA Cup was that we we were able to be competitive on all fronts this season. Uh, and and, the, and the, the, the top 10 league finish is maybe slightly underwhelming. I do take Kyle's point about we overachieved last season, so maybe we need to kind of just recalibrate and settle, you know, resettle to where we're supposed to be, find our equilibrium. Um, but, but, but the question is, just fighting on all four fronts to an extent, but not actually getting anywhere. Does that constitute a good season? And that's the question we're here to answer. That's 
exactly my point i think it's like okay noble we fought on all these fronts but we've not actually done anything with it we haven't come away with any there's no sil silverware I'm, I'm, I'm saying this in kyle's vision right we, we we're at a semi maybe we get knocked out of the semi there's no silverware we didn't progress to the round of 16 in the in the champions league we've finished in a pretty like moot spot in the league like for, and we're out of the league cup like I don't know, is that, that doesn't feel like success, but Adam, I think it's almost your go to tell us what you'll accept as success for the rest of the season. Audie's making a very good point about elite players staying, and I think we can extrapolate that um, in, uh, in Adam's point as well. But we'll take a break here if that suits everybody. Part kind of three of the show, and we're going to give Adam a go. We're going to give Adam a go about what success is. And I think there's a few sort of strands of conversation are coming off of this, um, which which are really interesting and I want to get into. But I believe the etiquette now is to let Adam say his piece. And I believe that the headline of Adam's piece is Europe by any means necessary. Am I right? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair. So I think we have to finish in Europe somehow. OK, so, yes, it could mean we go all the way in the FA Cup and we the unthinkable and we bring silverware home and the bonuses we also get in Europe next season. But I think, look, first of all, we are now an ambitious club. And regardless of any mitigating factors from this season, whether it's, you know, un unlucky with injuries, unlucky with cup draws, all of these things together... I think if we're talking about a good season rather than a decent one, I think we need to be carrying over European football into next season. So, that, as I said, there's been a lot of challenges this season, but even taking all that into account, we really have a very a very big opportunity to hit European uh, hit European competition next year from our league placing. Now, the way the league is set up now, we're kind of in a kind of in a, a sort of secondary mini league, aren't we? So you've got sort of Man United in sixth at the minute of time of recording with, with 38 points. And we're in ninth with 33 points. Um, West Ham and Brighton in between us and Wolves and Chelsea below us. Um, the way that... So there's, there's only really a couple of places that we actually need to make up because we've with the chance that there's possibly going to be, not guaranteed yet, but with coefficients, there could be a fifth place uh, gifted to the Premier League. So it could be five Premier League teams qualify for the Champions League. That obviously has a knock-on effect with uh, the other European placings. So there's another... So that would, if, if that was the case, we got the fifth Champions League place. Sixth place would get Europa League. The winner of the FA Cup would also get Europa League. And... Seventh place would get Conference League. Now, if any of those cup winners are in the top five, then again, this could mean that eighth place in the Premier League is good enough for European football. Now, we're in ninth at the minute, okay? We're getting players back from injury. It feels like we've come out the fog of, 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 of December and that just that awful run of form. And we have a very, very real chance to have a go in the league. We, we, we shouldn't be dismissing it. We shouldn't be sacking it off. And actually, given that the FA Cup is um, not necessarily a midweek cup competition anyway, it's not like we would necessarily have to decide. I think we, we've, we've got, we've got uh, we'll have fitness on our side for once. We'll have players back. Yeah, we're going to pick up a couple of inj injuries between now and the end of the season. But there's a very real chance that we can make up a couple of places in the league, especially with those teams around us, Brighton, West Ham, Man United. They're, they're, they're good teams, but are they great teams? I don't think so. I think they're very get. We, we, can, we can get at them. Um, but why is it important that we get European football? What, what, that's what would make it good is because a couple of reasons. A lot of people will argue against the Thursday, Sunday schedule and just think, nah, not for me. Let's have a clean season, go in with no European football next season. We really attack the league to try and get the Champions League. That's what people will be saying. But we need to be in Europe. We need extra revenue streams. If we want to yeah. grow and progress as a club, we need revenue streams. European football does that. We're also not going to get the, the mental group of death draw. If we, if, we, if we rock up in the Europa League or the Conference League, 
we're going to be, have loads of fixtures where we can play maybe a second string side and still feel comfortable in that competition. The other thing, which has been touched on before, which was in my notes before, by the way, is regardless of which European competition we are in, yes, it's going to matter if we're in Champions League or not, but being in Europe full stop will matter when it comes to the transfer window in summer. Exactly. Um, players and agents will want to go to teams who are playing in Europe. It doesn't matter if it's Europa League or conference to an extent. Yes, everyone wants to be in the Champions League, but not every player can get a move to the Champions League. So any European football is going to attract the kinds of targets that we want to that we want to attract. Yes, we've got them, you know, we've got backing, we'll be able to spend a lot more in summer, but if we don't have European football, that's just an it's just one less reason to come to Newcastle United. And I just think it's so achievable to get that in the league that we absolutely shouldn't be taking our eyes off the prize in the Premier League. That's where the prize money is as well for extra places. And as I said, with the way that European football placing is going. The top eight could be good enough. We could certainly, certainly achieve a sixth or seventh, even without that. I, I fully, fully believe that. And if we're an ambitious club, we're a big club and we want to go places, we should be looking at that. We shouldn't be hiding away from that or shirking from it. A good season, if we're being honest, is taking and carrying European football into season 2024-25. Feel like a round of applause, everybody. No, um, I, I, I agree with you. And my point is um is not dissimilar to yours, actually, Adam. And, and we'll probably spend a little less time on mine because of that. But I also think, yes, it means that we're attractive to interesting talent and talent that Eddie Howe and Jason Tyndall can, can look at and think, oh, I can develop that. That's an interesting young player who is hungry for this kind of football this European football, this exposure, this, 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 and I can develop them. And I, and I think, I think that's important, but I also think it's important for the existing elite talent that we have to stay because you are going to get itchy feet in that squad. If, um, if we are unable to, to finish with a European place. And, and I think, I think that's where your acceptance falls down, Kyle, because, um, and, and and what Adam said, you know, if we are top half, we we there may be there is a chance there. There is a chance that we're going to end up in a European spot. But I just think Bruno Bruno's. I mean, there's already like whisperings that Bruno's not that keen. Bruno wants to you know go to La Liga or whatever. And and is is Isak going to stay if we don't have any kind of European football next season? You know, you, you need to promise these players something, don't you? You need to give them something to get their teeth into, and. And, and I think that also feeds into what a successful season is. So I think it's a totally right call out because it's not just about, um, it's not just about um, like, like where we finish or what competition we finish in. It's, it's also about who we retain, who we attract, what else we bring in, or do you want to talk about money? Yeah, well, I was just going to make the point that the one place where I would agree with Adam is like you get more money, I think, per place that you finish up the Premier League than you do for winning the FA Cup. So if the club's main driver is money, then yeah, like crack on, like prioritise the league. Let's go and get beat by Yondal Thomas and Les probably by the time we get there. Um, Blackburn. Uh, my my concern about that is is that if we constantly chase the balance, uh, the balance sheet and we constantly worry about getting those positions that we end up being another Harry Kane Spurs that you're probably good enough to finish fourth, fifth, sixth most seasons, but you're never good enough to really compete for any of the major trophies. And my concern about it is that whilst I are actually, although we've said that I've fucked off the league and I've decided that it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I, 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 I actually think, I actually think that realistically probably what will happen is that there'll be less afternoons like Saturday and there'll be more games like Villa away from home. Where we, where we will get results that people don't expect because now we are playing once a week or maximum twice a week. Like, there's the opportunity to do that. Um, but money is going to come into it. You're right, Adam. And, you know, the, we've seen already profit and sustainability is bit in January. It's bit a load of clubs, not just us. And those extra couple of places that you could finish up the league could make a massive difference to how much money you've got to spend. I'll flip it around slightly and say that the emotional part of me didn't get into football to chase balance sheets. 
And this is the final chance for this group of lads to win a trophy together. We thought the Carabao Cup was their opportunity to start off on this journey together. And I think what Saturday and the little run in December has proved is, is that for some of these players, the FA Cup is their one and only probably remaining chance for us to be able to show them how good they are, having played for Newcastle United and win a trophy, because I think the likes of Wilson, Almiron, etc. probably won't be here in September 2024. Adam? I would also just say, I'm not chasing a balance sheet, but money helps you progress. And, you know, we had a fairly small squad last season where we were probably using about 14 players, really. This season we had a few more, but it doesn't feel like that because we've had injuries and we've had suspensions for, you know, a year um, as well. But what we're going to have is quite a big squad. And what big squads want is playing time and European football is also going to provide that. And if we, with that extra revenue, Audi, what what will happen is we can afford a bigger squad and with bigger squads, you can afford to, um, you can afford to play more second string sites in the, in the earlier rounds, like, like the elite clubs do and re- save your best players for the premier league. And then when it starts getting to the business end of domestic cups or hopefully European competition as well, um, that's when you bring in the big boys. So what that money actually does is probably give you a better chance um, in, in in the short or medium term of actually having a better crack at the Cups because you're not having to compromise too much between, oh, well, we've only got one striker. Who Do, do we play him in the FA Cup game or do we play him in the Premier League and risk injury? You know, we won't get that. With more money, it be- becomes more turn up. We can buy more players in. We can fill out the squad with more first-team options. At the minute, we've still got a lot of deadwood in there. So I would say that actually any little bits of money like European revenue coming in, that's actually going to help us domestically as well moving forward. How complicated was all that, eh? Mad. Spreadsheet champions, get in. But uh, no, it, it, I, I do agree. I do agree with both to, to a certain extent. I think keeping with players is key. Whether we get, whether we go on a massive run and hit Champions League, Europa League, win the FA Cup, whatever, I don't think Bruno will be here in the summer anyway. I think that release course is going to be too tempting for one of the elite teams like a Real Madrid or something like that, which is a bit of pill to swallow, but... I think if you can keep Botman and keep Isak and keep Gordon and that as well with European football, I think that obviously helps. And then obviously you bring in the the Adidas sponsorship as well as the other sponsorship deals that are coming in and the TV revenue are finishing high up in the league. It'll help have a good summer. I think Eddie will want to bring in younger players as he's shown like yeah. with like Bruno signing a 24 year old Gordon 21 22 so he'll be looking for those younger hungrier players anyway but they usually come at a come at a cost so the more revenue we'll have obviously is going to help with fill that squad out because this season you you know as well as I do we've had three goalkeepers on the bench and we've played six fullbacks at Old Trafford and like we've we've had we've had a crazy season in terms of injuries so having that extra revenue being able to bring those extra players through um will be a massive a massive thing but I think Audi was bang on in what he said before with the new sponsorship deals coming in with all this all, all this stuff from finishing high up in the league. This team under Eddie, it started with we being in the bottom three, end up in the Champions League, having some amazing nights. For a lot of them, it is a last chance saloon type of thing. And I think this team will always be remembered for achieving Champions League and stuff like that. But I think to put a stamp down on the history, this team definitely has has an FA Cup to win in it, hopefully. Um, hopefully that comes true. But uh, to, just to go at the top of the point, um, yeah, got it. Got to be. It's going to be good for the revenue streams and stuff like that. Fair for the summer. So yeah, I'm definitely in agreement with with Charlotte for sure. What I would say is, obviously, I would love a cup win. Like if we won the cup, I'd be I'd be drunk for a week. I couldn't can't wait. I'd love it. But what I mean is, it just feels more achievable, feasible that we just rise a couple of places up in the league because that feels more in our hands. I think a cup run is less in our hands because you're, you're faced with a random draw. You're faced with a lot of very good clubs still vying for that trophy as well. They want the silverware. They're hungry for it. And they're arguably uh, have the resources to actually do it more than we do. Uh, we might have the desire. So yeah, it, as much as I'd like that, yes, that would be an ex- great season for silverware, but I just think it just feels more feasible, achievable 
to try and get there to get Europe for a good season in the league. So what I'm hearing is that Adam's fucked off the cup. Audie's fucked off the league. Kyle's just sitting pretty. Somewhere happy, in the middle. Happy on with the, the semi. Kyle on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there for this part and I will come back to round us out and, and say what I think. I'm sure you're all desperate to hear it. And we'll uh, we'll we'll finalise our conversation there. But very interested. Um, do uh, comment if you're watching on YouTube what success looks like to you. If you're listening on Patreon, make a comment all of that good stuff. We we love those conversations. We'll be back. Final part of the show, and we'll kind of conclude, I think. Um, for me, success, it, it kind of bleeds out of um out of just uh league position and um and and cups um into that financial success and into that transfer window success, holding on to our players' success. And so I think it's a little bit more complicated than just saying sixth. Although for me, it would be sixth. I think I would be pretty happy if I think that would be a successful season, given the adversity that we have faced throughout this season, the the, the banning of players, which nobody expected except all of AC Milan, probably. Um, the broken foot, the two dislocated shoulders, the two broken backs, like these absolutely insane injuries that we've had to deal with that aren't just Callum Wilson's hamstring again. It's it's the, so many groin problems this season. Um, <laughs> you know, we haven't, we like, I, if we can finish sixth, having um, gone to Paris Saint-Germain and and got the result that we did without making one single substitution because of all the bad groins. Um, like, that's an incredible sixth season for me. And as Adam has said, that will secure some kind of European football. Um, that's amazing to me. Now, I always find it really interesting when talking about cups because when we got to the League Cup final last season, there was a really... Obviously, there were people on, you know, there were outliers. But for me, there was a very clear delineation between the younger fans who were like, Champions League's the most important thing, fuck the cup. And the older fans who were like, no, I've literally never seen us win a trophy and I'm 60 years old. You're not, Audie's waving, but he's not 60. He's lying to you all. Um, and, 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 and I'm not saying fuck the cup off. I think we've got a very good chance of getting quite far in the cup competition. And I would really like to celebrate that with like my dad who was alive when we won the first cup, but only just, and probably not really cognizant of that. And, um, and, and, you know, he just, he just, he just is desperate. He's just desperate to be able to celebrate that. And I am too. And I think when that comes, um, you you will have to like peel me from the bars of Newcastle. I will be so excited and so happy. And oh, we get to do an open top bus tour and all of that. Not tour, not like a city Newcastle Gates had one, but like they'll do a parade. A parade's the word I want. Um, I'm like, I, I am desperate for that, but I'm also just desperate for us to to kick on with this project in a way that is like securing Europe and securing that. Um, that attractive top six position that is attractive to sponsors, that is attractive to uh, to other players. And actually it's, it's kind of sad when I'm saying it out loud that, that all this romanticism is like been pummeled out of me by FFP and, and, and responsible rules and shit like that, because really what I should be saying is bring home a cup and let us all sing in the streets. And what I'm actually saying is, you know, if we finish six, we might get an extra two million pounds on the balance sheet. Like, <laughs> what, like that's nonsense. But that is for me, I think, given everything that we've seen this season, I think that would be success. Obviously, that and a cup is, you know, more success. But that's what I would accept. Adam? I just think because we're so used to not... Um, judging a season's success based on silverware because it never happens. Right. A yardstick for all of our league success in my lifetime has pretty much been where did we finish in the league that season? 
So top six, you're right. It, 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 what it does is you, you're trying to – the way you articulate it there was – it, it maintains we're a top six club. It, it maintains our club status as a Premier League club, the most watched um, league football in the world. Um, and it's all about... So, you know, you talk about the Pardew season finishing fifth. Um, Eddie Howe finishing fourth. Yeah, we got into the Champions League. That was maybe more of the narrative. But it's it's all about where we finish in the league, which is w- what makes us think. When uh, Glenn Rhoda finished seventh, that felt pretty good at that point because yeah. it had been so turgid at the time. And we, it, the league place is where you can hang your hat, and because it's a more, um, it's a more realistic measurement of where you're at as a club, because it's it's a campaign stretch over 38 games. It, it it's a more accurate uh, signifier of where you are at as a club, and I think league position is at the minute it, it, that that is what we measure success by. I think mostly uh, as Newcastle United fans. So um, whilst I'm tempted to agree. With Adam, uh, I'm not going to. Uh, <laughs> so close. I'm to, I'm te- I'll see you. Were. I'm, I'm tempted to agree with him because of the point he makes about where you finish in the league does have a big parameter on what you, how you view a season. Of course, it does. It's the thing that lasts the whole season. It's 38 games, totally. Um, I remember going to watch us play in the UEFA Cup semi final at home to Marseille, and thinking, "Wow, we are 180 minutes away from a European final." Um, and that mattered because obviously we had to finish high in the league to do it. But the whole narrative around that season changed when Didier Drogba scored twice against us in the away leg. Suddenly it was a disaster season. Bobby was out by September. Now, what we've got to remember is as much as the league position matters, is actually the league position only matters to people who have a vested interest in what the league position is. As football fans, we are not supposed to get excited about the difference between fourth and fifth being 900,000 or 1.5 million pounds. You're right. We're not supposed to do that. Sky don't pay us to chant up and down and go and get in, get in. We're Excel spreadsheet champions. Sorry, Kyle, I've stole your like thing. Nobody cares about that. What they want to see is Newcastle fans getting really, really happy at beating Nottingham Forest away on Saturday. But what they also want is a story of Newcastle going to Blackburn. Maybe Thomason is the manager, maybe he isn't. The story of Yondal Thomason's Blackburn playing Newcastle. Because that matters to them. What I want to be able to say is like my granddad could when he went to three in the fifth three finals in the fifties. Like I uh, I was able to be able to say to my kids, except we didn't win any of them, about going to two in the nineties. Like that the reality is is that cup finals mean more. I remember when the FA Cup final was the entirety of your Saturday. It is we have allowed the Premier League, UEFA and the Champions League to devalue the FA Cup. But to the average fan who hasn't seen us win anything, and I'm not counting Scotty Parker on that stupid shield for the Intertoto Cup, <laughs> but for her, that hasn't seen us win anything of any major value bar the championship, we really, really need to get to the stage where the spreadsheet championship no longer wins. Now, I know Darren Eels will have his reasons for saying it does win. That's his job. He's not an Ecassi United fan. That's his job. Our view should always be success is measured by what have you got to show for it at the end of the season. I've changed my mind. Uh, fuck the league. I want a cup. Fuck the league. <laughs> no doubt. Back in your box, Adam. Adam. But, but, but by, but by um, that answer, Audie, what you're saying is unless we hit the FA Cup final, which is, which is a huge task, it really is a massive task, unless we hit the FA Cup final, is that, unless we make Wembley, this... Just hasn't been a good season for you at all. Is that where? Because that's what that's the question we're answering to bring it all back around. Has it been a what would be a good season from here? So unless we do a really un- incredible thing and hit the FA Cup final, you're just dissatisfied. Is that is that what it is? I'm not dissatisfied because my expectations were never that we'd get back in the Champions League again. In fact, Alex told me off of being too uh, pessimistic ages ago yeah. when I said I didn't think we'd get back in the top six. Like the reality is that um, I think the reality is is that this is probably like if we flipped the seasons over and this one came and then yes. the next season we finished fourth, there wouldn't be any issue here. Like nobody would be bothered. I think the big issue that we've got is we overachieved last season. And this is probably where we were, should have finished last season. Now, Adam, do I want us to finish out the league? Yes, of course I do. However, however, we are so, we were so close in the League Cup, we messed it up. Now we've got another opportunity. Let's go and try and get to another cup final because we might just land on our feet and get 
new I don't know uh put Maidstone in the cup final and then we can beat them. Like they might get all the way there and what a story that would be. So I think we just have to be aware that these opportunities of going late in the long runs in the cup don't come around very often when you can pretty much pin the rest of your season on it. This isn't Steve Bruce playing Fabian Share in a cup quarter final against Man City or whatever it was. This is a real opportunity. Yeah, totally agree. And I think it just comes down to that where as I said earlier on the podcast, it's mom- it's moments in the season that we've had. And if you say to me, look, a respectable season, but you win the FA Cup, I, w- I couldn't give a fuck where we finish if we win the FA Cup. Like if we're 12th, 13th, whatever, we've had some great moments in the season, be PSG, won the FA Cup. I think that would be like, that'd be one of the best seasons ever because you've had some amazing games in that. I'm not, I'm not going to be 50 years from now. Well, we won, we won the FA Cup, but we lost to Bournemouth in, in December and we had three goalkeepers on the... I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not. It's going to be it's going to be a case of, like, we won the FA Cup. There was a party in Newcastle. My dad waited all of his life to see Newcastle win an FA Cup because he never seen it. Finally got to celebrate that with him. Great. That that would do me. That would do me. And I think that would do a lot of fans, wouldn't it? I think that would do a lot of a lot of us. It would it would be a really special moment. And I and I don't mean to I don't, I, I don't mean to denigrate the cup. I think it would be an absolutely unreal thing if we. But I think I almost just won't let myself believe that we'll get there. I think there's the old Newcastle fans still sitting in there somewhere. We have to leave it there. We've spoken for ages, but it's been a really interesting discussion. So thank you, Adam. Stephen and Kyle for joining me, Charlotte, this evening. Um, We uh, will be back, of course, with a Post Forest podcast, hopefully with a massive win to talk about. Um, This has been the True Faith podcast. As a reminder, this has been sponsored by Aspers Casino, Newcastle home of the Mags £4 pint, available on all draft beers for all NUFC home and televised games, 12pm to 12am. Over 18s only, visit begamblerware.org, be drinkaware. And for full T's and C's, please visit aspersnewcastle.co.uk. Thank you so much for listening. Take care.